So this is the iPhone XR, Apple's first budget-notched iPhone and a fan favorite for many iPhone users. It was sold new for a really long time, however, seeing as it is now discontinued by Apple, much cheaper nowadays on the used market, and also after months of daily use, should you still consider buying the iPhone XR in 2023? Let's find out! Okay, so first of all, quickly, we have the specs. The iPhone XR features an Apple A12 Bionic processor, 3GB of RAM, and of course, we are going to be talking more about what these specs mean later on, variable storage options, at 64, 128, and 256 gigabytes, which is a pretty good range. However, me personally, I went with the base 64 gigabyte model. It comes in several fun colors, a first for the notched iPhone, with the usual black, white, and product red, along with blue, yellow, and the one I personally have, coral. I don't know, I think this might just be my favorite iPhone color ever. Such a shame they didn't bring this color back. It looks so nice. It weighs in 194 grams, which is a decent amount for an iPhone, and has a battery size of 2,942 milliamp hours. And as for key specs, well, that's pretty much it. Now we are going to be talking about things later, like screen resolution and how the battery performs, but I'd like to get this section out of the way as soon as possible, because then we can get into the really fun stuff. Next up, we have the design, build quality, and the button layout. The iPhone XR features the original notch design with the rounded off edges and bigger notch, which was essentially the design seen from the iPhone 10 to the iPhone 11 Pro. And despite this being the first budget notched iPhone, the design and the build quality hasn't suffered. It features this glass front and back construction with an aluminium bezel, and this feels absolutely amazing. It features an IP67 water resistance rate, However, I wouldn't rely on this just in case. Like, you can get this thing in up to a meter of water for 30 minutes, but honestly, I wouldn't recommend regularly doing this. In terms of button layout, this thing does have a pretty standard button layout for an iPhone of this era. A nice big isolated lock button, a couple of volume up and down buttons, and a mute switch. All the buttons still do feel really nice and tactile on this iPhone all this time later. And while initially there was an adjustment for me coming from smaller iPhones, like I had this issue where I would just occasionally accidentally take screenshots on this thing. That's entirely resolved now. I haven't had that issue in a really long time. I just had to get used to that bigger size. And yeah, overall, very few complaints about the build quality. That said though, I would still recommend a case because this thing is covered in glass and as you can see I accidentally did crack mine. I basically went through this whole experiment of just not using a case and it ended predictably. Also, as I said, I wouldn't recommend getting this thing fully submerged if you can help it, especially if you've bought it used and you don't know whether the IP67 is still intact. But yeah, overall, this iPhone XR is built like an iPhone. Following on, we have the, at least at launch, super controversial screen. The iPhone XR features a 6.1 inch liquid retina LCD display with a resolution of 828 by 1792. And while on the surface, this is certainly nothing special. As somebody who's tried basically every single iPhone, Hear me out. Because of the screen size and the distance you would usually use this thing, it's honestly really not that noticeable. The iPhone XR also features a typical peak brightness of 625 nits, so nothing stunning here. However, again, it is important to remember that this is an LCD panel, so it doesn't need to be as bright as an OLED panel. And sure, the colors and contrast levels aren't as good as they would be on an OLED panel, let alone the newer XDR iPhones. This thing still does look pretty decent though. Watching videos on this thing is a nice experience. Experience. It's a nice size and sharp enough to the point where I've never been distracted. It's also bright enough to use in basically all conditions. Again, I've been using this thing for months now. I've used this thing in all kinds of lighting conditions and I've never found that I needed more brightness. The iPhone XR does also have some more nice features, namely True Tone to keep your colors nice and balanced and haptic touch for that secondary interaction, both of which were great. Overall, while a higher resolution or LED screen would have been nice, I do still think the screen on this thing is certainly usable in 2000. It's a nice crowd-pleasing size being the new standard screen size on iPhones at 6.1 inches. So it is a pretty crowd-pleasing screen, despite the fact that it may be lacking a few features that higher end users may be wanting. Next up, we have Face ID, which is the main unlock method for this iPhone. On the iPhone XR, it is faster than ever. I'm not sure if it was iOS 16, which seemed to make it more responsive to different angles, but it's nice and snappy. It works well in all lighting conditions. And while those angles have been expanded, they won't necessarily be as good as something like an iPhone 11. Face ID on the iPhone XR is still pretty impressive, and in my opinion, from what I've noticed at least, better than ever. After this, we have the camera, which was actually another controversial one, as it's the only single lens notch iPhone with a 12 megapixel wide angle camera with an aperture of f1.8. Very similar to the wide angle cameras that you would see on other iPhones, but 
As I said, there's only one of them. So, should you write this phone off? Well, let's take a look at those photos first. In terms of performance, the photos that come out of this thing are genuinely impressive. Colors look nice, there's good levels of dynamic range, shockingly good sharpness. And while it would be nice to have a second focal length for people like me who really enjoy mobile photography, I've still had a lot of fun taking photos with this thing over the last few months. The selfie camera is a seven megapixel f2.2 system. And while this is certainly a little bit dated, honestly, it's fine for some selfies. In terms of video, this thing does shoot in 4K and up to 60 FPS, which is nice. And while it certainly won't match a professional video camera, this thing can look great for some YouTube videos. In fact, I've used this thing as a B cam countless times. So yeah, that's kind of cool. The front facing camera also shoots video 1080p in 60 FPS. And while it doesn't look as good as on the main camera, it's certainly good enough for something like an Instagram story or TikTok, which is honestly what most people are gonna use it for anyway. So yeah, not bad. The iPhone XR does of course also feature slow motion video in 1080p in either 120 or 240 FPS. I used it to shoot this section you're looking at now, and so while it might not be as good as, again, slow motion from a proper video camera, I did still have a lot of fun using it. Now, unfortunately, it's not all positives. There are no 120 FPS slow fees. Who the fuck cares about slow fees, honestly? Look, honestly, I've been using this thing for months. I haven't missed them once. I've never been like, man, I wish my face was in slow motion. <laughs> Overall, while this camera system is pretty stripped back, especially considering some of the options today, for most people's needs, I personally think this thing is absolutely fine. It's got great colors, great dynamic range, and so long as you find some cool locations, then you can totally get some really cool images out of this thing. Next up, we have the most important aspect of the modern smartphone, OS and app performance. In terms of OS support, this thing was released back in 2018 and is currently on iOS 16, so this thing probably does have a decent amount of life left in it. As I said in this video, I've been using this thing for literal months at this point, and it never feels like I'm using an old iPhone. Scrolling through the OS, opening up stock apps, and performing system functions all work flawlessly so no problems here. In terms of more intensive performance, watching 4K videos on this thing is absolutely fine. No problems here. All you're really gonna be limited by in this situation is your bandwidth. So yeah, 4K videos, totally fine. And in terms of gaming, while it's not gonna be as good as a modern iPhone, I found I still can quite comfortably play the games I like with minimal issues. And overall, while it is certainly getting on a little bit now, iPhones typically do have a very good support cycle and the iPhone XR is certainly no exception. As I OS, fine. Videos, great. Gaming, well, I'm not really a big mobile gamer, but I mean, it could play Coffee Cop, which is all I need. So with that, I am pleased to say the iPhone XR is no exception. Quickly, going back to the hardware, we have these speakers. The iPhone XR features a set of stereo speakers, so using both the top and the bottom speakers. And there haven't really been any issues here. Like there was occasionally on older iPhones, like they got a balance. I'm not sure if you guys remember that, but yeah. That's good to see. The sound is fine for watching some YouTube videos or playing games. And while they're not excellent for checking the masters of the emo album you recorded last year, that's niche. They are still totally fine for their intended purpose. Finally, let's talk about the battery life. The iPhone XR features a battery size of 2,942 milliamp hours, as we already said. And while this isn't crazy, as long as you get one with a good battery, because chances are you are going to be buying this phone used, make sure you check that, by the way. It'll actually be pretty good. This is not only due to the optimal on Apple's part, even on iOS 16, but also that screen that we were talking about earlier. So while that battery may not seem like a lot for a modern OLED iPhone, remember, the screen is a lot lower resolution and not as bright because it's LCD, and so the battery doesn't actually have to work as hard to drive that screen. I've generally found I can get through my day quite comfortably with the iPhone XR, and while on heavier days I do occasionally need to plug it in during the late afternoon, early evening, it's still a pretty great overall, and I've got by with this thing totally fine. Like, I don't own a power bank. I'll leave my house with this thing for 10 hours or so at a time. And this thing has never left me out in the cold. Okay, so to summarize, who should buy this iPhone? Well, as I said last year, I think the best audience for this phone is either somebody who wants to try an iPhone without breaking the bank, or someone who wants a backup iPhone, or for a younger relative for their first proper phone. I don't really think any of that's changed, honestly. If you are a tech enthusiast, you still probably shouldn't buy this phone. It'll probably still leave you wanting a little bit more. But if you want a wallet-friendly iPhone that just works, then this iPhone XR could be a great option. All right, guys, so that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Let me know, by the way. 
What was your first iPhone? Was it something like an iPhone 5, like mine was back in 2017? Yeah, I'll never stop using that update iPhones. I don't think I've just accepted that at this point. Or is something like this gonna be your first iPhone? Feel free to let me know in the comments. I always enjoy reading those. As for now though, as always, thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you wanna see more content like this, then smash that subscribe button. I'm done for now, and I will see you guys in the next one.